Hello, and welcome to Culture Shock. I'm Evan, and this is... Brent. Brent. So, Brent, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about kitsune. Kitsune? Yeah. What are kitsune? They are Japanese foxes. Japanese or, foxes? More specifically, the mythological version uh, thereof. I seem to remember some other mythological creature that we talked about. But it wasn't a fox. It was. No, is it the tanuki? I tanuki. Yeah. Now tanukis are more like a raccoon, but this, you're mm -hmm. talking about foxes. Yeah. Now there are two species of fox in Japan. Um, they're both red colored, actually, um, and lots of legends have spread a about them. Uh, and those legends um, I call them kitsune, mm -hmm. and they're, they're kind of a, a yokai, which you may have heard of. A yokai. A yokai is a Japanese spiritual creature of some kind um hmm. you know, think think like demons things along those lines oh um so a kitsune is a some kind of a, um a trickster and uh, hmm. a, a creature that you might uh, come across in a, uh, uh, an unusual place in japan and uh, be <laughs> careful of wow well now i see he's got that fox tail this picture it of does. one here this is one in in uh, outside of a gate, mm -hmm. a stone carved one, it appears. Yep, yep, yeah, right outside of a Tori gate. And you notice uh, uh, in his jaws there is a scroll. Yes. Now that scroll, and I think we have uh, some better uh, shots of that, um, that scroll represents knowledge. Knowledge. And the scroll is there because Kitsune are also associated with Inari, the Japanese rice god, hmm. sort of the god of the Japanese harvest. And if a kitsune is acting as a messenger of Inari, it'll often have a scroll in its mm. mouth. You may recognize this also from My Neighbor Totoro. Uh, in that anime, there are uh, several uh, points where you see, uh, in fact, when they're waiting for the cat bus, and Mei is wandering around, she wanders over to the local shrine, and there's a little kitsune there uh, uh -huh. with, with the, the water dripping off of its nose. Yes. And uh, that's what it is. Uh, and it's representing um, uh, Inari. Because they are in this very agricultural area. Hmm. There's lots of shrines to Makes the sense, rice god. Makes sense, the rice god. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you want a good harvest. Yeah. Uh, now, Katune can also transform into a human. Oh, they're tricky. They sure are. Now, unlike Tanuki, they can transform into anything. Uh, Katune can only transform into a, a man or a woman. They can mm. only transform into people. And uh, they often cannot hide their tails. So they could be a person with a tail. It can be, yeah. <laughs> Watch it. You know, if you see somebody and they're trying they to hide got tail, that tail yeah, <laughs> coming out around. Now, I said that they can't hide their tails. That's because a kitsune can have up to seven tails. I seven think, tails? Actually, nine tails. Nine tails? Yes. This is reminding me of a Naruto. Mm. Uh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Where do you think they got that from? Hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, and so there are these shapeshifters who can, who can do this. They also often make deals with people. So much like you, you get you know, spirits in uh, our myths and you know, the Irish myths and so forth, the fairies and such, uh, the Kitsune will make deals with people, but they're, you know, we have these tales of tricksters, and they're certainly tricksters, but they're more dealers and dealers. Uh -huh. So they'll, um, the classic example is um, a Japanese a person finds an old house, mm -hmm. and they decide they're going to move into this house. And when they move in, they find there are Kitsune living there. Whoa. And the kitsune in, uh, um, respond by offering them the deal and they'll offer them money, for example, to stay out of the house or to give the house over to the kitsune. <laughs> um, so it, it's not quite the, I'm going to haunt you or I'm going like, to... Okay, let me live here in peace. Exactly. Take some money, go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but being, you know, not entirely human, they have different ways of doing that. So if you ever accept money from a kitsune, be aware that you will find that some of that money is actually twigs and leaves and sticks and... Tricksters! Exactly. It's not <laughs> going to be... Anything. I thought I was coming away with a bag of gold! <laughs> <laughs> this is the other interesting thing, is that unlike, say, a leprechaun that will leave hmm. you with nothing, the Katuni will leave you with something. Something. They Just will... not what you expected. Exactly, yes. <laughs> um, so you'll get some kind of payment, but we'll, well, we'll see. And the top of it was gold, and then underneath exactly. there was all the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's exactly oh, how sneaky, it sneaky. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now, the other interesting thing is that that's more an example of a male kitsune. Hmm. The, the, the female kitsune stories are much more often about them becoming the lover of a human. Ooh. Where a, a man will meet a beautiful woman and will then um, marry her and hmm. she'll have kids. 
and they'll find out that she's actually a Katuna. Spicy. <laughs> but, this, um, but often in, the story is more a kind of a star-crossed lover story, hmm. where it's not that she's trying to trick him, it's um, they're people from two worlds, and so she often is trying to um, bridge those two worlds. Wow. Um, and there's, there's a famous one where she sneaks back every night to, uh, to, to spend the night with him, uh, so they can have some time together, even though they can't be together all the time. Oh. So it's, it's actually very sweet, surprisingly. Wow. Yeah. Now that's the uh, now th that's that's the nice side of Kitsune. There's also the other interesting kind of sociological side. Oh, what now? What might that be? Well, um, Kitsune can also possess people. Possess people. Yeah. Like, take over their bodies. Exactly. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, in fact, there was a famous story of a man hundreds of years ago who married this 14-year-old daughter of some other prince um, and his luck immediately turned. And everyone said, oh, she must be a Kitsune. Um, they so blamed her they because mm -hmm. of his bad exactly. luck. Exactly. And um, this, <sighs> th this possession will cause you to behave madly. Um, hmm. And so you'll run around without clothes on or you'll babble or you'll do all sorts of strange How's that things. different from my normal life? <laughs> Wait, no, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> but, but <laughs> <laughs> so the, the interesting thing is that that's basically mental illness. Yeah. So until the 20th century, people would blame mental illness on kitsune possession. Whoa. Yeah. And this was culture at large there. Absolutely, yes. So, so some big jumps have been made with... Mm some of the modern sciences and being able to explain mental illnesses and Absolutely. behavioral aberrations. It's a great example of a culture trying to find a pattern in something that doesn't seem to have a pattern. And What framework do we stick it in? Well, <laughs> here's, here's some explanation. Right. It may not be right, but it's one. <laughs> yeah, we know these creatures are tricksters, so you know, we'll make it. That makes and sense. Tricksters and cousin. <laughs> and it's not like bog babies or lots of these other stories where you have um, some creature will come and steal your baby and swap it out for a fairy baby, right? <laughs> um, same kind of idea there. Um, so yeah, uh, um, and, and you'll still see in some parts of Japan, people will, will reference, oh, you know, they must be possessed by a uh -huh. That's the only, only way they can be uh, acting that way. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Wow. Now, now we've seen uh, kitsune not just in the culture, but also in anime as yes, well. Yes, we have. Um, so some of these ideas of these tricksters have, have come up here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, what, are, what are some of the shows that uh, people might be familiar with that have an example we already mentioned, you, you mentioned Naruto. Mm. That'd be a big one. The Nine also, Tails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, also, Pompoko. Pompoko. Uh, no, that was the story about... The Tanuki. The Tanuki. Yeah, the little raccoon dogs. But there's also... Yeah, they run into a Kitsune. Kitsune. In, in, in the movie, uh, who has transformed into, into a human, or is living in, under the guise of a human, if you will. Mm. Um, and that's pulled straight from those myths, is that that's exactly what's going on. And... Accurately, he's a wheeler dealer. You know, he's got a he's got a, got a big office and he's dealing all this stuff. Um, also, Shippo, Shippo in from Inuyasha, yeah, yeah. little Shippo with the yeah. tail, the tail, <laughs> that and the little ears. That's a, a classic. He poofs up sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a classic. Also, Renamon from Digimon. Renamon, Tamers. yeah, uh, you know, Fox with the, the multiple tails, and as she uh, digivolves, she gets more tails. Do more wow. along those lines. Um, yeah, they, they crop up a lot. Um, you'll see them actually more often in video games, hmm. um, partly because of that transformative aspect uh -huh. um, it becomes a, a, an easy thing for video games to, to, make, to, to make use of. Hmm. Um, but yeah, they crop up uh, quite a bit. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Now, I haven't seen, is Spice and Wolf one of these ah, stories? Ah, good question. Uh, so that, that's, that's a little different. That's um, different. Partly because she's a wolf. She's a wolf. She, she's a wolf. Now, these are foxes. Yes. So foxes there's a difference. Wolf. But it is... Um, Along the same lines. The transformation. Right, the transformation and, and the idea of a, um, in, this, in this case, she's a god of wheat, but same kind of mm, idea. Wow, yes. I see some similarities there, but Absolutely. a little bit different. Yeah, and, and so she, she, she has this, this other form that she kind of switches back and forth. And similarly, she can't always hide her tail. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely the same kind of idea. Ah, well, next time I'm at an anime convention i'm gonna look around and see if i see any tails yeah. float around <laughs> oh i know you mm -hmm. <laughs> still you trickster <laughs> don't accept money yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. well thank you for joining us on this episode of culture shock if you'd like to see some other videos uh, we have some on our website geekarchaeologists.com google it